What's up guys, my name is Brandon and it's been over three weeks since the last iOS update. And I know you guys are probably going crazy because you aren't getting your iOS update fixed, but that was expected. I mean, it was the holiday season, so we had to expect a couple of weeks without any type of updates. But now we're going into the second week of January and things are finally about to get back to normal. So before we discuss when to expect the next iOS beta and the next public iOS release, I wanted to discuss how iOS 15.2 and 15.3 beta 1 have been running for the past few weeks. We're also going to discuss some of the latest Apple leaks and rumors, cover the latest community poll, and more. Now before we talk about iOS 15.3 beta 1, I wanted to briefly discuss iOS 15.2 and how that's been running for the past few weeks because this of course is the latest public release. So if you are not on the beta program and if you update your phone regularly, you should be on iOS 15.2. And this update is very solid. I mean, it's the best update to iOS 15 yet. Of course, the performance, battery life, everything is solid. I'm lasting through almost an entire day, every single day. So no issues with app crashing, none of that. However, some people are having issues with iOS 15.2, and it's mainly related to the messages application. So some people are reporting that there's a bug that makes messages send red receipts, even if you have that setting disabled. So if you go into your settings and if you have send red receipts disabled, some people are saying that it acts like it's enabled because other people can see when you read their messages. So for example, if somebody sent me this message right here, this message to myself, and if I read that, the other person would see when I read that, even though I have that setting turned off. So this has been popular on previous versions of iOS, but it seems like it's coming back now with iOS 15.2. I personally have not encountered this at all on iOS 15, but it is pretty widespread. There have been articles about it and Reddit posts about it. So it does seem to be at least somewhat widespread. But aside from that bug, I really have not heard too many negative experiences with iOS 15.2 and it's been out for a while now. So pretty much everybody has been using it for a good amount of time and I've not really seen too many complaints. Definitely not as many as we saw in prior versions. So I've been loving all the new features like the hide my email feature, the parts and service history, things like that, the CarPlay updates, everything is running perfectly for me. Now let's move on to the latest iOS updates and that is iOS 15.3 beta one. So of course, this is currently in beta, it's available to developers and public beta testers. And multiple people like I mentioned in previous videos are still reporting that promotion is better in 15.3. Like the scrolling speed is better in 15.3. And again, I've tested that so much, I've really tried to see a difference. And I cannot see any difference here in this first beta, it may be coming because we did see an update to promotion on the new m1 pro and m1 max macbook pros and the mac os monterey 12.2 beta so that could be coming to ios as well but promotion has really never been an issue for me on ios so everything's running fine for me on 15.3 beta 1 again it did fix my spotlight search bugs like when i search for photos it actually comes up now so that's nice i never had that issue over the past few weeks it was fixed in the first beta i noticed it right away so that's always good now we are also only a month away from select states getting to test out the digital driver's license so as you guys know 30 states are working on the digital driver's license and TSA is going to allow them soon at airports. So I talked about this previously, but a spokesperson for the TSA said that they're going to begin a pilot test at two airports in February. Again, we're only a month away, and then they're gonna add two more states around March. So we're getting really close to seeing that digital driver's license roll out to the masses. So I cannot wait to test that out myself. I think it's going to be great to not have to worry about carrying a physical driver's license, at least in the airport, and being able to have it in the wallet app on your phone. I think that's going to be a game changer, especially when it's fully implemented years down the road. And then as far as the battery drain bug, I know a lot of you guys have asked me if I'm still experiencing the battery drain bug when it comes to Apple Music, but I am not here in 15.3. I have no issues with battery draining at all when streaming Apple Music. I also have it on high res lossless. So the number one you know, way that the battery would drain if it were to drain, and I'm not seeing any type of bug related to the battery and Apple Music, thankfully. Now, as far as the performance goes on iOS 15.3 beta 1, performance has still been excellent over the past few weeks. And as I said last time in the previous follow-up video, which is a couple of weeks ago, 
you know, this is one of the best, if not the best first beta I think I've ever used. I mean, it's very stable. The Geekbench scores were really high. Multitasking is solid. I've not had a single app crash for a first beta. This is super impressive. Again, it's definitely the best in iOS 15. It's really the best first beta I've seen in quite a while, which makes sense. I mean, Apple left us with a first beta, you know, um, for three weeks over the holiday season. So they had to believe in it. They had to know it was pretty stable for a first beta to even push it out like that. But it has lived up to that. And I've been really impressed with the performance. And also the battery life is surprisingly good as well. It feels about the same as 15.2 to me. I do notice it drains a little bit in third-party applications when I go on like TikTok and Twitter especially, but those may just be related to the application. But battery life, really no complaints for a first beta. It's very, very solid. All right, so now let's move on to the community poll. So of course I post these community polls every single week asking you guys for your input on how the software versions are running for you. So you can see if you go to my channel and then over to the community tab, I asked this earlier and you can see here the results. The polls were broken for the first like two hours I posted this, like you could not vote in it. So there were like 20 comments with zero votes, which made no sense. So it was broken earlier. So I'm not sure what was going on with that, but it seems to be back to normal now. So there are a lot fewer votes than usual because of that. But you can see here, 67% are on 15.2 and it's running great. 15% on 15.2 and it's not so great. 8% on 15.3 beta one and it's great. 3% say it's not so great. And then 7% are not running iOS 15 at all. So let's go ahead and check out the comments to see what you guys had to say about these software versions. So Seth here, I'm on 15.3 on my 13 Pro Max and battery drains a lot faster than I remember. It's crazy Apple's taking so long to update. Yeah, so it's taking long to update because of the holiday season, but it seems like he's having issues with battery drain on 15.3. Again, it is a little bit noticeable to me, but it's not bad for a first beta. It's really hard to complain about battery drain on a very first beta. So you can see here, Gabriel says, this update rocks, 15.3 beta one, running it on my main device gutsy there iphone 12 pro and it's the best beta i've ever seen no bugs and the battery life has improved a ton over 15.2 that is really good to see so you can see pretty much everything is good for gabriel there and it seems like a couple of people agree as well that's always good to read about a first beta and that's also been my experience personally as well rare here says haven't had any issues really at all on beta one as you said very clean update on the 12 pro max once again good sign for 13 15.3 rather beta one blake here 15.3 on my 13 pro max it's just okay touch responsiveness issues that arise randomly and require completely closing an app and trying again that's interesting i've not had any issues with touch responsiveness that could be an issue with the application and not the software wi-fi slash cellular switching doesn't seem to be working like it should battery life seems decent ready for beta two yeah me as well i'm currently running 15.3 beta one on my 13 pro and everything has been really and surprisingly great so far Battery life can be improved, and it looks like he's having issues with third-party animations, still not in 120 hertz, but still overall a good comment about 15.3 beta 1. iOS 15.2, and it's been good. No major bugs or inconveniences. Side note, I noticed my 12 series has the 5G UC more than the 13 series phones. Yeah, I've experienced that myself as well. Alexander here says that I'm slowly losing my sanity with no updates. Yeah, me as well. Brandon here, nice name, says 15.3 beta one. All has been great for me except for the previously mentioned FaceTime audio calls for multiple participants initiating as video for everyone but me. So that's interesting. Hopefully that does get fixed pretty soon. 15.2 has a really weird bug that turns down my system volume after listening to music. And after a few locks, unlocks, the volume returns to normal. So I've actually experienced that myself as well. I believe that was on iOS 15.0. So it looks like that might still be back. iPhone 12 still on 14.8 waiting for a jailbreak. That's an interesting one. So looks like some people are still into jailbreaking. O'Shane is having an issue with AirPods getting disconnected. I've been hearing that ever since iOS 14. So I don't think that's an issue with 15.3. That may just be an issue with your AirPods or something other than just the software because that happens on literally every single software version some people are saying that 15.2 is the worst public update they've ever had so if everything's crashing and if you're having major issues and nobody else is or at least the far you know majority are not having issues i would consider a fresh restore like a fresh install of ios 15.2 that's probably going to fix a lot of your issues because all those things here are not very widespread at all 
most people are having a great experience on 15.2. iOS 15.2 notification bug, scheduled summary will reappear even after you've opened an application. So that's an interesting bug. If you guys are having that, let me know in a comment down below. I don't think I've seen that one myself. And some people are also saying that CarPlay is crashing their apps, camera app crashing as well. So yeah, a lot of these issues could be resolved with a fresh restore. I'm not having any issues myself, or most people are not having issues with apps crashing, especially not on the public releases like iOS 15.2. But I do appreciate everybody for giving your input here on these updates and how your device is running. It always helps us see you know, how everybody else is running and not just me personally. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So if we go into our calendar application right here, you can see we are approaching the second week of January, which starts on the 10th. So next week, the week of the 10th, is when I would expect to see a new iOS update. We're gonna see iOS 15.3 beta 2. So we will see that, but we could also see an iOS 15.2.1 sometime very, very soon. I think we're gonna see a 15.2.1 at some point in January for bug fixes, especially one that is affecting the Apple Watch Series 7. So a lot of users are experiencing charging issues after updating to watchOS 8.3, which was released alongside you know, iOS 15.2. So I would expect to see some sort of bug fix update, some sort of you know 15.2.1 is most likely what it's gonna be. I would expect to see that before the end of the month. We could even see that as early as this coming week, although I think the week of the 17th is more likely that just because we're gonna see a beta this coming week. And then as far as the final public release of iOS 15.3, I would expect that to come at some point in early February, most likely within the first two weeks. All right, so now let's move on to some recent Apple news. So I asked you guys last time if you want me to keep covering Apple news at the end of these videos, and most of you guys said yes. So if you still want me to keep doing these, let me know in a comment down below. So the first thing I wanna talk about is AirPods Pro 2. So DigiTimes is reporting that suppliers are preparing shipments right now. So we can expect them to launch at some point in late 2022. So these AirPods Pro 2 are going to have a new charging case that's going to have a completely new design with a built-in speaker. So this is going to allow for it to emit sounds when pinged via the Find My application. So if you lost your AirPods, you know, right now, if you ping your AirPods Pro, it's only going to ping through the AirPods, like the speakers on the AirPods, not the case. But now there's going to be a speaker on the case so you can find it better when lost. Also, the AirPods themselves will have a new chip inside for improved audio and the ability to play lossless audio. So of course, lossless audio cannot be played over Bluetooth. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple achieves this. This is also going to be included with the next generation AirPods Max as well, which we might see later this year as well, but possibly in 2023. Now, as far as the upcoming 2022 iPhone SE, Dylan DKT is reporting that this budget iPhone will have the same design as the 2020 iPhone SE, just with 5G and a spec bump. So a lot of people said that we could see the iPhone 11 style come for the new iPhone SE, but that's not coming until 2024, it appears. And we can expect to see this new iPhone SE in the first half of this year, so probably pretty soon. Now moving on to the iPhone 14, which is the iPhone we're getting this year, the Pro models are going to get rid of the notch in favor of a pill-shaped camera cutout with all of the Face ID sensors underneath the display. So this is going to be crazy. It's gonna look awesome. Now the regular iPhone 14 models are still gonna have the notch. It's only going to be the Pro models that are going to get rid of the notch in favor of that cutout. And this info also comes from Dylan DKT on Twitter, who was agreeing with reports that were already floating around that stated that the 14 Pro will not have a notch and it's going to have that hole punch. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about Apple's upcoming AR VR headset. So AR and VR, of course, is all of the rage right now. Just look at Oculus. And now Apple wants to get in on that action. So it looks like 2022 could be the year that we see this new headset from Apple. So Ming-Chi Ko reports that the headset will feature two 3P pancake lenses, which have a folded design that allows light to reflect back and forth between the display and the lenses. So on top of that, Ross Young is reporting that the headset will have three displays. So two micro OLED displays and an AMOLED 
display. So this thing's gonna be insane, and Apple's main focus with this headset seems to be on gaming, but we'll see what else they have planned for it in due time. But if you wanna get your hands on this, prepare to dish out a lot of cash, because rumors are saying that this headset will cost close to $3,000 when it launches. So it's going to be pretty expensive, but it's also going to be honestly probably the best on the market when it does get released. So there you have it. Those are the latest Apple leaks and rumors over the past couple of weeks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed this video overall. Of course, if you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.